This video will be a general overview of the Scribe Online platform. The Scribe Online platform is a multi-tenant platform for integration. This allows us to have access to my own organization and any of my customer organizations as well, which I can easily navigate with a single click. From here, I can see the status, configuration, and running of any integration. I can also invite other users into my organization to help me with my integrations. These users are named by email and can have a role of either a user or an admin. This allows me to collaborate with other members of my team without having to worry about sharing VPN, RDP access. I simply have one static login to get through and that gives us the ability to collaborate on many integrations. Once those users have been invited into my organization, I also have the ability to remove them. So if I am a customer and I no longer want my partners to have access to my running integrations, I can go ahead, select them, and remove them from my organization. Now that user will still have access to all their other organizations, simply not mine, which is Powerhouse Consulting in this video. The way that Scribe Online works is it runs through an agent mode. Um, agent technology can either be a cloud agent, which is going to run in Scribe's data center, or an on-premise agent. An on-premise agent is about a 20 megabit file that gets downloaded and runs as a Windows service. This is going to allow me to get access to both cloud apps and my local apps for my hybrid integration. The agent technology that we have is what actually executes the integration as well. So this is a cloud-managed, cloud-configured integration service, but it's actually executed via that agent, so either on-prem or in Scribe's data center. Now what those agents also do is they allow us to connect to different data sources. And here we can see a list of the connectors that we support. Anywhere from exact target and go to webinar down to MySQL and ODBC. So we can connect to either named API type applications like Dynamics GP and CRM or SQL Server and text files. As we have more named applications, we're going to find them in our marketplace. The Scribe Marketplace allows us to both see what connectors are available and also to either install them or remove them from my organization. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new solution instance, just to give a demonstration of how this operates. In this case, I'll pick Marketo and CRM 2011. I'll select whether I want it to run in the cloud or on-premise. And then I'll get to my mapping screen. From here, I can import a set of templates, which is going to allow me to get a head start on my integration. This could be anywhere up to 90% of the work that I have to do, uh, within one fell swoop, and then I simply need to go into that map and reconnect it. So in this case, I'm going to connect it to CRM 2011 as a source, Marketo as a target. It's going to validate that those connections are working, validate that all my field mappings are valid, and it's going to come back and tell me that that has been successful and it's now able to be run. Now I can also see what entities are available now that that's loaded up, and also what field mappings exist in that template. Here I can decide that I want to create additional mappings as well. So I can drag and drop that over. I can get into that formula editor and make changes. So this is a transformation layer that I can do some cleans against that particular field. I may want to uppercase my city every time I, I move it across. We have up to about 65 different functions within our, our formula editor here. Anywhere from our basic text parsing to if then else logic, um, regex replacement, and uh, dynamic lookups to our target system. So we're pretty good array of different transformation layers that I can select to either do that or basic mappings. Now with the template, what I can also do is I can add functionality on top of that. So in this case, I'm going to add a quick integration with GoToWebinar attendees into Marketo. So I'm simply going to select my GoToWebinar connection from my source, add a query, and say that here I want to pull back attendees and I only want to pull back attendees that have their webinar has ended. So I'm going to say I want to pull it just since the webinar has ended since the last time I ran data. And for each attendee that I want to do some integration with, I'm going to go ahead and run it through a quick operation into Marketo. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to use my upsert block. And I'm going to be able to create the mappings into that lead entity. So it's a very quick, simple integration that I'm able to create. Um, again, I could pick any other fields I want to be mapped. So here I can do a very basic um, first name, last name, email, 
or if I had more data available to me in my source, I could pick a lot of different fields to be mapped across. Next, I'm going to add a little more complex of an integration. In this case, what it's going to be is taking some lead data. So I want to pull some data out of Salesforce. And again, I'll use that same query block. And here you can see with Salesforce, we have many more objects that are listed. And I can actually pull back joined objects. So I want to do accounts. I want to do contacts. Um, I may also want to add some custom entities in there. So my free trial entity. So we can see not just the standard objects, but all your custom objects as well, and the relationships that exist. So for every account that I get, I'm going to bring that data into CRM online. And first, I want to see, does that record exist? If the record does not exist, I want to create it. If it does exist, I want to update it. What I also want to do is drag that newly created ID back to my source system, so I can do an update to that source. And then I can add some more child looping elements. So I want to go ahead and iterate through all the contacts on that account and create them in line. So I can create a much more complicated integration rather than the first one, which is a simple upsert. This is a more of a nested if then or statement. And I can also debug this. So I can walk through this row by row, operation by operation to really get the feel for exactly what this is going to do. Lastly, I can schedule my integration. So I can either have it run on demand, which is by a button click, or I can have it recurring every half an hour of every day, only on the 1st, the 15th, and the last of the month, every half hour, or even every, every one of those days at midnight. So I have a pretty broad scheduling capability to let this run automatically behind the scenes. Once it's running, Scribe also does error management. So I can see any of these that have had failures. I can look at the history. I can see what those errors have been. So I can drill down and see what all the errors have been. I can select records here individually to be reprocessed. I can see the source data on the right, the error message on the left. And by selecting those fields, I can either reprocess only those ones with a click of a button, or I can back out and reprocess the entire set as a whole. So I can reprocess all from this UI. So I have a really easy way to go in and reprocess those field records. Um, have my UI for management and really get everything I need within this one UI rather than chasing it down through three or four different apps. Thanks for watching our overview video of Scribe Online. If you have any further questions, please follow up with your sales rep. And if you don't know who that might be, please follow up with sales at scribesoft.com.